Ha ha! Ha and <laughs> ha and what? Oh wow! Ha and welcome to all the things you are. <laughs> Yabba dabba! Beep! Ha and oh! Ha ha! And we're gonna get a wonderful look at this classic Jerome Kern tune, "All the Things You Are." Now, check out how you can get more videos like this one. Just navigate to Bruce Gregory Video On Demand. When you get to the site, you can browse videos in a wide variety of categories. Each video covers a different topic and has bonus content and supporting documentation. There's even a free trial option. Don't forget to use your promo code to get a discount off your first purchase. And the link for that promo code is in the description down below. Now, if you dig the video, throw it a like, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell notification because that's going to let you know every time I upload a new video. Of course, the channel releases new videos on every Tuesday and every Friday. So let's get started. Things you are. Man, this is just one of those jazz classics you need to have under your belt. Now, it is one of the standard tunes in the book of jazz because it has so many different things going on. Of course, we can't go without saying the five key centers that lie within this tune, and that's really what's happening here. Now, that might sound very scary to you if you're just kind of new to playing this music or if you've kind of been working on tunes that have more of a simplistic harmony associated with them, but this is one that really isn't all that complex, and I have to tell you, it is one of my favorites to really play. Of course, we're hanging in the key of A flat major, but there's some really cool twists with this particular tune because the tune, even though it's written in A flat major, it doesn't get to an A flat till the actual last bar of the tune or really kind of the last melody note, which is really interesting. It starts on the sixth chord and it kind of walks the cycle. And then we switch keys to E flat. And then to G major and a 2 5. And then to E major. And then back to A flat major. And of course, the wonderful walk down, which you've seen in so many tunes I've gone over with you. Of course, A Train has this. And we can't forget Night and Day and many, many others that are on the channel. But we start with basically starting with the four chord. Now, the original score is written with a G flat seven, but really that's the same thing as thinking of a minor four. And then we're walking down the scale to the three. And of course, that wonderful B diminished to a 2-5 to home. And the interesting thing what Jerome Kern did, the 2-5 here for the turnaround is really a 2-5 or a minor 2-5. G minor 7 flat 5 to C7 altered or C7 flat 9 back to the 6. And that's really the entire harmony. Now, I know there's a lot of keys and that kind of throw them at you directly, but really what's happening here, he's basically using a 2-5. So if you visited any of the lessons in the Jazz Investigation series on Wednesdays, we started with the blues, of course, 3-6, 2-5, and then we went into a lot of tunes like All of Me and A-Train that basically have two fives to the four they're not switching keys, but it's just demonstrating to you how that 2-5 
comes before the next key center. And that's really all Jerome Kern is doing here. He's really kind of using two fives to get inside the next key center. So it's not that complex. It just means you have to shift around a little bit. And of course, this particular tune is great fuel for when we get into tunes like Giant Steps, where we really are looking at different key centers moving much more rapidly than this. One of the things we're looking at, of course, here is solo guitar playing, and I did a little intro in this particular tune, and that's something, as I said, if you've looked at any of the lessons on All of Me, or I Can't Give You Anything But Love, of course, intros are really personal, and I've included a chord melody for this song, but remember, the intro is something that is personal to the player, so that's not included in the chord melody, and the chord melody is not the exact way I would play it every single time because it's more of an improvised piece. This particular part of the lesson is really a model or a template to give you some ideas as a springboard that you can use when you want to play this particular style of guitar. So if I walk you through this chord melody, it sounds kind of like this. right to C major 7, and then we're switching keys. Now you might notice with this particular chord melody, I'm not always accenting the actual melody of the song, because really I'm kind of using that juggling approach right where i'm actually playing chords and playing some lines i'm playing rhythmically i'm playing some bass lines along with it so i'm taking some liberties when it comes to playing this tune from a complete solo standpoint altogether that first part's going to sound like this I get into that G major. And I'm kind of harmonizing most of that melody, playing it a little different, and then I just bring it down to E major. And of course, that wonderful C7 sharp 5. And then back to the top of the form. And then that wonderful turnaround, which I'm basically taking some liberties there and using that juggling approach rhythmically to walk it down. And I'm using an A major triad there. It's not really an A major seven because of that note, that A flat there, and then a turnaround or the minor 2-5 back to the relative minor in this case, which is F minor. And that's really kind of the whole chord melody. Of course, like I said, I took a lot of liberties in this particular piece to play it slightly different than the actual true melody. But let's listen to the real melody so that we get the contrast.
is not really all that difficult. It kind of goes like this. And then he's walking it down in a different key. Now here is a little bit different than the chord melody, but this is the real melody. And then to E major. And then the turnaround. That whole melody is really kind of interesting and I embed it when I play that solo style. Very different than maybe I would play it if I was playing with a duo or a band where I wanted to really bring that melody out. But of course, this is one of those awesome tunes where you can mess around with the melody a lot. Particularly if you listen to Jim Hall or Pat Metheny's version of this tune. They really do take a lot of liberties around it. strategies here well not really all that crazy right I'm thinking of a flat major for the first part of the form for me until I get to that D flat major and then I'm thinking of transitioning because I'm going basically to C major now how am I getting the C major well I'm here at D flat major and Jerome Kern slides that G7 which is the five chord and resolves it to C major. So it only happens for a very short time until he brings us back to E flat major. And now we're in E flat major because we have the five chord, B flat, and I'm just thinking an E flat major scale. Until he gets to the four chord again and he brings it up a half step and takes us to G major. And of course, we know so many tunes in G major, just like Just Friends, I Can't Give You Anything But Love. And remember, again, if you've seen the Jazz Investigation series, G is a really important key center for jazz players to know because there's so many tunes that are written in it. So knowing how to play in it is really great. The other thing about G major is the fact that it's a really wonderful key to play on the guitar because you have all this expansive fretboard to work with. So it's one I encourage you to really get your chops around. And then he takes us to E major, which is the 2-5. Until he gets us back to F minor by that sharp 5 or that 7th altered chord and takes us right back to that F7. And then other than the turnaround, we're basically in A flat major. Now, on the turnaround, I use my typical style turnaround approach. D flat, I'm playing D flat. When I get to that G flat seven, I'm thinking right over a D flat minor seven. I'm basically thinking of taking it major, then minor. So something like this. And I'm accenting the third so I can hear the major third to the minor third. When I get to the C minor seven, I'm just treating that three chord, of course, as a one chord playing A flat major. And then we have that descending diminish. Now, for descending diminish, of course, I treat those as a pure diminish, not a flat nine chord. So I'm gonna play whole step, half step, and I'm playing right over it. And of course, we have this nice shape here, right here in that diminished. And then to a two five back to A flat major. So it's not as scary as you might think when it comes to playing over it. Really, to me, the complicating part about this, it almost is harder to remember all of the chord changes in this particular tune because they shift so much. However, the logical way that Jerome laid it out 
and the masterful way that he composed it, it makes it a little bit easier. But I would encourage you really to work on the chord changes and memorizing those first and really knowing how they're coming so that you can start to anticipate your solos in this particular tune. Check it out. The things you are. I cannot say enough great things about this tune because there are so many different ways we can play it. And of course, so many different awesome, awesome, awesome recordings of this tune, particularly by some of the greatest guitarists. Of course, I can't leave out Jim Hall, Pat Metheny's version, their version together. Of course, Joe Pass's version and George Benson. And don't forget Kenny Burrell and Wes Montgomery. All of them played this tune and really all of their versions are just unbelievable. I listen to one and then I want to say, wow, that's the best one I've heard until I hear the next one and I say, no, that's the best one I've heard. So it's a really great tune and I encourage you to get it under your chops. Of course, if you dig this video, make sure you check out my video on all of me where I go over more ideas on how to play solo guitar. And don't forget to check out all of the videos on the VHX.TV site. Of course, the channel releases new videos on every Tuesday and every Friday. And don't forget to check out the new series on Wednesdays, Jazz Standards You Need to Know. And I will see you next time. Peace.